Hi all, welcome to Simple Engineering, Engineering Simplified. I am Neetu Rahul. Today we are going to discuss about energy bands. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. Let's move to the video. Energy bands. In case of a single isolated atom, an electron in any orbit has definite energy. So when atoms are brought together, it is influenced by the forces from each other atoms. So electron in an orbit can have a range of energies rather than a single energy. And the range of energy levels are known as energy bands. So within any material, there are two distinct energy bands in which the electrons may exist. That is valence band and conduction band. So valence electrons, that is in the valence band. So electrons in the outermost orbit of an atom is called as valence electrons. So in the outermost orbit, it has, it can have a maximum of eight electrons. So the valence electrons determine the physical and chemical properties of that material. When the number of valence electrons of an atom is less than 4, the material is usually a metal or a conductor. The examples are sodium, magnesium, aluminium, which have one. Sodium has one electron, valence electron, magnesium has two valence electrons and aluminium has three valence electrons. When the number of valence electrons of an atom is more than 4, the material is usually a non-metal and an insulator. We can take the example of nitrogen which is having 5 valence electron, sulfur which is having 6 valence electron and neon is having 8 valence electron. And when the number of valence electrons of an atom is 4, the material has both metal and non-metal properties and is usually a semiconductor. So carbon, silicon, germanium are examples of a semiconductor. Free electrons. The valence electrons of different material possess different energies. So greater the energy of the valence electron, the lesser it is bound to the nucleus. So in certain substances, particularly if you take metals, the valence electrons possess so much energy and they are very loosely attached to the nucleus. So this loosely attached valence electrons that move very in random within that material and are called free electrons. So the valence electrons which are loosely attached to the nucleus are known as free electrons. So coming to the energy band, the range of energies possessed by the valence electrons is called valence band and the range of energies possessed by the free electrons is called a conduction band. So valence band and conduction band are separated by an energy gap in which there is no electrons exist in this gap and that is called forbidden energy gap. So uh, this is your valence band and this is your conduction band. So uh, in the conduction band there will be free electrons that is in valence band uh, the electrons that will move up to the conduction band. So that is energy is increasing. The range of energy level is high in the conduction band. And between this valence band and conduction band there is a gap, energy gap that is called forbidden energy gap. So coming to the concept of shells and subshells, each of the allowed electron orbit is assigned a quantum number principal quantum number that is n which can be 1, 2, 3 etc. or a letters we will assign that is k, l, m etc. So if 1 or k that is the starting so that will be close to the nucleus. In each shell there may be subshells corresponding to different rate of rotations, orientation and spin of the electrons. So the angular momentum quantum number it describes the shape of the orbital and it is associated with the angular momentum of the electrons and it tells which subshells are present in the principal quantum number. So it divides the shells into subshells. So it is denoted as I. It has values from 0 to n minus 1. And there are four different subshells that is S, P, D, F where S is spherical, P has three orbitals 
along x, y, z and s has the lowest energy and f has the highest energy. So each subshell can hold a maximum number of electrons. So s can hold 2 electrons, p can hold 6 electrons, d with 10 electrons and f with the 14 electrons. So the shell number is equal to the number of possible subshells. So shell, if we are taking first shell or k, that is a starting, it can have only one subshell, namely that is 1s. Similarly, we have 2s, 2p, then 3s, 3p, 3d and so on. Like that it will go like spherical, uh, which is having 1s, 2s, uh, then uh, p having 3 orbitals. So like that it will go from s, p, d and f. So each subshell has the number of orbitals. And the orbital is the region of space where an electron can be found. Only two electrons are possible per orbital. So uh, three rules that determine the structure. That is rule one which is lowest energy orbitals fill the first. Filling the pattern will be like 1s after that 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p like that. So here in this figure you can see that the first orbital it is 1s, then 2s and 2p, then in 3s, 3p, 3d, then 4s, 4p, 4d, 4, 4f, uh, in fifth orbital you have s, p, d, f, g like that it will go. So rule 2 is Pauli's exclusion principle that is only 2 electrons are permitted per orbital with opposite spin. So, two electrons with opposite spin in same orbital is said to be the paired one. And rule 3 is Hunt's rule where most stable arrangement of electrons in a subshell is when the maximum number of unpaired electrons exist, it is possessing the same spin directions. So, here you can see when n is equal to 1, you have s orbital only. When n is equal to 2, you have s and p. When n is equal to 3, you have s, p, d. n is equal to 4, you have s, p, d and f. Like that it will go. That is the shells and the subshells. So next is linear combination of atomic orbitals which is denoted as LCAO. The isolated atoms are brought together to form a solid. Various interactions occur between the neighboring atoms including those described in the, in the previous session about the S, P, D and F shell subshells. So the forces of attraction and repulsion between the atoms will find a balance at the proper interatomic spacing for the crystal. The atomic orbital is a wave function which describes how the electron is distributed around the nucleus. So in the first um, video where we have seen each orbital and how the electrons are uh, allocated in that orbital. So all this we have already seen. So the conditions for effective linear combination of atomic orbitals is the combining atomic orbitals it should have same or uh, nearly the same energy and the or atomic orbital should have same symmetry about the molecular axis. The superposition of two orbitals are of two types, bonding and anti-bonding orbital. So bonding orbital where the amplitude of the two atomic orbitals, they interfere with one another and anti-bonding orbital, it take the difference of the two atomic orbitals. So uh, this will be the linear combination of atomic orbitals where you can see that the atomic orbitals will be having a wave function 51 and 52. And the, uh, here you have two types of orbital, anti-bonding and bonding orbitals. So bonding orbitals will be like this and anti-bonding uh, energy level or orbitals will be like that. So uh, if n number of crystals are brought together, you can see that the anti-bonding energy level and the bonding energy level. So the energy level in a silicon as a function of interatomic spacing is shown in this figure where the atomic number of silicon is z is equal to 4 atomic number is 14 and each isolated silicon atom has an electronic structure so it will be having 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 and 3p6 that is 6 plus 4 10 
10 plus 4 14 so atomic number will be 14 in the ground state so 1 s 2 so in the s you have two or two atoms are there 2 s 2 then 2 p 6 3 s 2 3 p 6 3 p 2 so totally the atomic number will be equal to 14 so here the relative energy of the electrons and the relative spacings of the atom is shown over here so uh, inner shell and this will be the middle shell and this will be the outer shell so uh, outer shell will be having uh, the electrons so here you can see that 6n states and 2n electrons will be there and uh, in this state you have 2n states and 2n electrons like that all this uh, 14 atoms will be obtained or will be allocated in the inner shell, middle shell and the outer shell. So the relative energy of the electrons and the uh, spacing of the atoms it is shown over here in the diagram. So hope this is clear for everyone. This is about the energy bands. Uh, where we have conduction band and valence band and a forbidden energy gap is also there. So, uh, hope this is clear for everyone. If you find this useful, please share it with others. Thank you.